Good evening. I'm calling to order the meeting of the Arlington Select Board for Monday, April 4th, 2022. This is outgoing Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. With me tonight in the Select Board Chambers are... Leonard Diggins. John Hurt. Diane Mahan. Eric Helmuth. Adam Chapdelaine, Town Manager. Doug Heim, Town Council. Ashley Miller, Office Manager. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with an act signed into law on February 15th, 2022, that extends certain COVID-19 related measures. The act includes an extension until July 15th, 2022, of the remote meeting provisions of Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. The governor's order, which is referenced with agenda materials on the town's website for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, permit me to offer a few notes. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom, is being recorded, and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. All participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the Novus Agenda platform Finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call. Tonight we begin with our organizational meeting, so let's see how much of the town's business we can get done tonight. And I will now turn to item two, uh, organizational meeting for the purpose of electing a chair and vice chair, Douglas W. Heim, Town, town Council. Attorney Heim. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy, and congratulations on your reelection. Thank you very much, and thank you to the voters of Arlington uh, for that as well. Thank you. Uh, good evening. I'll be serving as the uh, chair pro tem for the nomination and election of the next chair of the select board for the following year. Consistent with the select board's traditions and handbooks, I will now open the uh, floor for nominations for chair. Do we have any nominations for chair? Mr. Helmuth. I'd like to nominate Leonard T. Diggins. Okay. Second. We have a nomination and a second. Mrs. Mahan. I'd like to move to close nominations. Okay. Uh, we'll conduct a roll call vote on the, mo do we have a second to close nominations? Second. I'll conduct a brief roll call just going down the line rather than in the traditional order. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Nominations are now closed. I'll now conduct a roll call vote on the motion to nominate uh, Leonard Diggins as chair of the select board. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yeah. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Mr. Diggins is now chair. A big shuffle. Mr. Diggins, may I? Excuse me? Mr. Chair, may I? Yes. The chair now having been selected, uh, the chair should open nominations for vice chair. Thank you, sir. And so I'd like to open nominations for vice chair. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes, I nominate Diane Mahan for vice chair. Second. So, uh, Ms. Mahan? I'd like to move to close nominations. Second. Second. Nominations to close. And so, uh, Mr. Hine? I'll now conduct a roll call vote. Um, Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Nominations are now closed. And now let's take the vote. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. 
Mr. Hurd? Yes. Congratulations to Mrs. Mahan. So, on with the agenda, I suppose. Okay, so, thank you very much. And then we began another year of select board meetings. And uh, next on the agenda, uh, so we go to the for approval to the run to remember. Um, I'm having problems pulling that up. All right, thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. So, uh, we have the run to remember Julia Miller uh, was Mr. Um, Pescatori. So, can we bring Mr. Pescatori up? You're just going to have to unmute your mic. Mr. Yes, uh, Great. Mr. Pescatori? Yes. Sure. Would you like to tell us more about the run? Um, so, the run to remember Julia Miller was. Um, a run I'm organizing for one of my friends who passed away a, um, a few months ago. And we're just doing a 5K run in the of her because she ran cross country, country and also track out high school, a high school. And we're just doing this run from the Great. So, do my colleagues have any questions? Yes? Um, first, I'd like to move approval. Yes. So, any seconds? Second. And um, I just want to say, um, very um, thankful and inspired that you're uh, taking this in initiative um, for your friend and alumni. Um, the My Sports was track, so um, I, I know the family that sort of coalesces around that um, and, and pretty much stays lifelong family and friends. So um, I just want to say thank you for um, organizing this, um, for continuing um, the memory of um, Ms. Miller. Um, whatever the board can do to assist, we're always here to help. Thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. Anyone else? I'd like to second the motion. Thank you, Mr. Hellman. So, um, we'll take a vote. And so, just excuse me. We don't need a roll call, right? Well, you're conducting the. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Chair, for me. Yes. You're conducting the meeting in a, in a hybrid format. Um, it may be helpful for folks who are listening at home, um, given the fact that there's not the same level of participation. Um, it's obviously up to the board um, how you'd like to administer the votes. I do not understand that it takes more time, but I, I think it would be helpful for folks to be able to follow along with the meeting. Well, I think that's a good enough justification for doing so. so that's, um, no, it wasn't me. <laughs> Felt it though, you know. Uh, so, <laughs> so yes, I mean, let's do as you recommend. Um, okay. Okay. Hi. okay, and just so folks know, I usually take the uh, uh, roll call votes and all votes in order of seniority, and then the vice chair, and then the chair. If the uh, board has any objections, please let me know. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Dickens? Yes. It's unanimous vote. So, thank you very much, Mr. Castor. So. Moving on to the consent agenda, uh, we have the minutes from March 7th and, and farmers market. So I think that's going to be Ms. Kramer. No? It's a consent agenda, so they typically don't appear. Okay. All right. Fine. It's just that I saw her here, and, and I had the impression that she was going to say something. So, so that's why I, I, I went there. Thank you very much, though. But hey, I appreciate those corrections anytime you'll get to many opportunities to make many more of those do not worry about my ego on this at all uh, um, and uh, next uh, we have Arlington High School ice cream fundraiser for the Farming Cancer Center and, and after that the request for contractor drain drain layer license uh, and I guess there's another one uh, of those and so two contractor drain layer licenses so can I get a uh, motion I'd like to move approval, Mr. Chair, and just uh, mention, based on my experience of the ice cream fundraiser last year, this is an event to plan for. So I'm glad they're doing it again. Great. Second. 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 Any other comments? Well, I have a comment, and that is on the on the, the farmers market. You know, I noticed that they uh, are doing the fresh box, I mean, which I mean, gives fifteen dollars I mean, to. Uh, people uh, uh, on SNAP and I think some other um, program team so that they can 
more easily afford in um, fresh food. I think that's a really great program. I think Arlington East is devoting $35,000 to that, and I think it's a really good cause the first year they're doing it. So um, I'm thrilled to see I mean, us doing something like that. And, um, and uh, <laughs> on the ice cream line, there's a line in there about we scoop our hearts out. I, mean, I, I just feel like a, a country song coming on. You know, it's like, I scoop my heart out. All for you. <laughs> anyway, you know, so, um, so on that, you know, let's um, uh, take a vote. People want to announce who made the motion, seconded, only because two people seconded it. So Ashley doesn't get to make the decision you did. Okay, great. So, uh, Mr. Helmuth, so, so Mr. Helmuth made the motion, and uh, I'm going to go with Mr. Porcy as a second. Yeah. Just Thank for you. minutes, I'm sorry. No, no. Look, I mean, I really appreciate it. Don't, don't hold back. You know, so thank you very much. So, Mr. Hein. Mr. Hearn. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Helmuth. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. Diggins. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Okay, great. And moving on, we have um, licenses and permits, you know, outdoor restaurant and retail permit. And I think this is by, um, for trust. And so, let's see who, I'm not sure who we have on for this. I mean, so, um, Ashley? Yep, it'll be Mr. Kim. If you just want to unmute your mic whenever you're ready. Yep. Ms. Ken? Can you hear us? If you just want to unmute your mic and explain yep. it, go right ahead. Can you hear Yep. So yeah, I'm just applying for the, uh, the outdoor dining outside of Mass Ave, on 689 Mass Ave, uh, outside of Trish. Okay. And so, um, any of my colleagues have any questions or comments or want to make a motion? Move approval, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Ms. Mahan. Um, any seconds? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Hurd. And, uh, so, any further comments? Great. Right. Well, you know, it's another, I think, another good um, application for this great program I mean, that has expedited the um, ability to do outdoor dining. So, I'm really happy to see. Uh, the work by Ms. Carter um, continuing to show fruit. So, so with that, I'm happy um, with a, a motion made um, by Mr. Mahan and a second by Mr. Hurd. I mean, let's please take a vote this time. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. Diggins? Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you, Mr. Khan. Have a good <coughs> Excuse me. It's a good summer. Uh, so, Moving on to traffic rules and order, other business, we have a discussion about potential 40B, an application located at 1021 to I think 1027 Mass Ave. So um, we have a Mr. Feldman. If you just wanna unmute your mic, Mr. Feldman. Great. Thank you, Mr. Feldman. Good evening, Good evening everyone. Um, thank you for accommodating um, my client and myself on your agenda tonight. Um, if you can um, add Jackie Mashiori, we have a quick, a very, very quick PowerPoint presentation that we prepared that we'd like to just walk through. Um, but we will really keep it short. Right. But uh, Jackie Mashiori uh, is on the webinar. There is. And if you could, Sorry, they're listed. Is it a Matthew? Would that be the well, same? Well, Matthew, yeah. Well, there's Matthew and then there's Jackie as well. Okay, I don't see um, Jackie, but there's three Matthews, so maybe I'll promote one of them and <laughs> all right. Okay, yeah, okay, this is great. That's, that's, that's my point, you know. Well, while, while, they're, uh, while they're coming on, um, I, uh, I wrote, um, requesting this uh, opportunity to uh, introduce myself and my client. Um, uh, my name is Paul Feldman, I'm an attorney in Boston uh, at the law firm of Davis Long and Augustine. I represent the Maggiore companies, uh, Paul Maggiore, who is the CEO, and, and Matt Maggiore, who um, is the president, and we're here to um, brings the board's attention that uh, the measure is going to pursue with affordable housing development under 40B. Um, and 
Um, <clears throat> we're, we haven't yet, but we are in the next couple of weeks going to be filing mass housing for site approval then. Um, and uh, when that happens, typically mass housing will contact the community where a proposal for housing development has been um, filed, you know, requested, uh, in order to get feedback from the community. And I've been doing this for quite a long time. I've done a lot of 40B projects. I've worked with this client for a long time. They've done a lot of development work. I'll introduce them in detail, but we, we think it's just very inappropriate that a community would learn about an affordability, affordable housing project from mass housing and not from the applicant, not from the developer. And, and so we wanted to to come to your board to introduce ourselves in the project, not because the select board has permanent authority, but because it's a project in your town and you should know what's going on and not hear it from this housing. Uh, you should also know that in our effort to, you know, really the community, we've already been in touch with the planning department on several occasions and been through some conceptual drawings with the planning department. We've also had several informal um, working sessions with the Conservation Commission um, to get feedback and, and ideas from the Conservation Commission. And, um, and we've reached out to our abutters so they know uh, that, uh, that we desire um, to proceed with the development. And, and it was important for us to, to come before the select board and introduce ourselves and give you guys an opportunity to ask us whatever questions you would like to ask. The applicant, as I said, is the Maggiore companies. Uh, they have done a, a lot of ground up development and they also operate a construction company. In their ground up development, they've done a total of about 650 residential multifamily development projects in a lot of different communities. They've done over 8 million square feet of flex industrial space and they've done about 3, 000, 3 million square feet of commercial. And as a general contractor, you know, being a builder for uh, on various projects, they do $150 million in gross revenues annually. So they're a very well experienced um, um, and um, long term uh, contractor and developer in the Commonwealth um, with an excellent reputation. Uh, Jackie, if you could switch to the next slide. We wanted to quickly show you some of their recent residential projects. Um, in Wakefield, they just completed Wakefield Station. Very, very successful. Uh, basically, um, they have commercial on the bottom with, with residential on top. This was a ground up development. Uh, we did all the permitting. Uh, ultimately, this was a for sale project and, uh, and, and, has been, and has helped revitalize the area. Next one, Jackie. Uh, Rise 475 was in Reading, also on a main main street in Reading. Um, not so dissimilar from Mass Ave, although a little less busy. Uh, same type of thing, commercial on the bottom, residential on top. Next one. In Somerville and Davis Square, they really did a unique project. They, they ended up um, um, seg um, aggregating uh, a few different parcels, one of which was owned by the DFW Post. Um, and um, they worked with the Post that had a, a rather old and dilapidated facility and acquired the Post property and built into their project a brand new DFW Post and Hall for that um, um, unit of the, of the Veterans Foreign Wars. And uh, it was a combination um, building some residential in Davis Square and, and, and building a new facility for the BFW and that collaboration worked out very well in another successful project. Um, in Watertown, uh, this is another multifamily development. This wasn't permitted by the Maggiore's, but they built it. And then just the last one for purposes of today is we want to show you that not only do they do multifamily you know, downtown style buildings, but they also do multifamily communities. This is in Woburn, a uh, property called Shannon Farms. 
and uh, its uh, townhouses and the like. So the proposed development um, involves 1027 and 1021 Massachusetts Avenue. Um, this is a quick snapshot of the assessor's map. 1027 is highlighted in yellow. Right next to it to the right is 1021. Both of those properties are under contract with measurery companies to be purchased for this redevelopment. And that just gives you a quick snapshot. Brattle Street is the cross street to the um, um, west. This is looking down on Mass Avenue, looking down on, uh, well, it's 1021 and, and 1027 is immediately to the left. And the um, trees in the back are all part of the site. Um, and just to, to point out a couple of things about this neighborhood, this is really a, a mixed use neighborhood. It's in the B1 zoning district, but there's a, a few buildings down to the right. There's a, a five story brick building, as you can see. Um, a couple of buildings over on, on Brattle Street is another five story condominium uh, building. And then obviously across the street, also down to the right is an eight story uh, building. And then there is three and four, three story buildings that are actually 40 feet tall. So it's a, it's a, it's a mixed area, some larger buildings, some, some smaller buildings. Um, but uh, the, 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 the development opportunity here would be to raise these two structures that exist at 1021 and 1027 and build a new building. Uh, Jackie. So here's what they're proposing, 50 units, 25% uh, would be affordable at, um, and at affordable under our, the state program is at 80% of annual mean income. So there'll be 13 affordable units. Five of the units will be three bedrooms, 35 will be two bedrooms and 10 will be one bedrooms. Uh, under the 40B program, uh, having three bedroom units are, is, is, a, is a regulatory requirement. There is going to be 50 indoor parking spaces there's going to be just under a thousand square feet of retail. And then there's going to be amenities for the residents. There's going to be a resident fitness center, uh, a concierge office. Obviously, there's going to be elevator access. Um, we'll show you in a, in a rendering in a minute that there's a second floor common courtyard with green roof and patio space. Um, and then there's going to be a, um, a, a, a resident garden amenity at the rear of the property with walking paths. Really what that is also going to do is um, create a, uh, we think, much better environmentally sensitive um, uh, environment um, near the Millbrook River. Um, some of the thinking has, uh, for that garden has uh, come about with the Conservation Commission. So let me show you a rendering of what's um, intended. Um, this is uh, the, the, um, a rendering, a perspective of the proposed building, looking at 1021 and then further up the road is 1027. You're looking toward Brattle Street. Um, and just one thing to point out right away so that you could appreciate it is the, um, the building is, is, is scheduled to be uh, a five-story building, but the fifth story is not a full story. It's completely set back from the street. So from the street and from the abutters, it'll appear as if it's a four story building because the, the, the fifth story is really set back and is interior to the building and is not visible from the street and therefore brings down some of the mass. Um, and I'll just gonna show you the next perspective because you'll begin to see how these two things work together. So now Mass Avenue is on your left and you're looking uh, uh, down across toward the back of the property, Millbrook is on your right. And um, the, uh, it's, a, it's a U shaped um, on the interior. You could see that you know, the, the top floor is, is set back um, and, and doesn't, go, uh, doesn't sit all the way on top of the fourth floor. Uh, but the, the green roof and courtyard patio space that we were referring to a moment ago sits on top of the, um, you know, basically the, the, the garage and, and first level of the building. 
So it's actually sitting on the second floor, but it's an interior uh, courtyard um, and, and green roof. Um, and we could go back and forth between these two renderings um, uh, if you want to see that again. Um, and um, we also have, and I'm going to stop talking now and give the board a chance to um, ask whatever questions you'd like, uh, but we also have the elevations and the floor plans and stuff queued up if you, if you want more detail. But for purposes of taking the board's time this evening, we thought introducing the project to you quickly is, was the better way to proceed. Um, the last thing I'll say is, um, you know, we're, um, we're familiar with the 40B process. We're familiar with um, affordable housing projects. They are uh, really been an important tool for the Commonwealth to develop affordable housing. Um, and, um, and the end product of having a combination of market rate and affordable housing in the same community has really worked out very, very well in the communities that my clients have done, but also for the Commonwealth in general. You know, you, we, we're, we're, at it, we're, we're long past the days of the 1960s and 70s where quote unquote housing projects were built, which tended to uh, over time uh, um, not, not do very well. Um, and so this model has really been successful in a lot of communities. And we know that Arlington has some familiarity with it. And um, we wanted to uh, introduce ourselves in the project to the select board. Um, and, and you can expect to hear from Mass Housing in the next several weeks. Thank you very much, Mr. Solomon. So um, I open discussion up to any of my colleagues. Questions, comments? Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You, um, thank you, Mr. Feldman, for the for the presentation and, and uh, for for coming to us initially, to, rather than as you said here from Mass Housing. Could you just give us an idea on timing? Because once you do submit to Mass Housing, that creates a, a hearing process for us to um, to respond and 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 to provide a. a um, comments to, to Mass Housing. I'm just curious what you said in the next few weeks. I'm just curious if you have a date nailed down for that because that would impact the board's schedule and different departments that we want to hear from. Fair enough. So um, uh, just to point to select board for a second with the 40 b process, it's the Zoning Board of Appeals that is the comprehensive permit grant and authority in the community. Uh, but there are prerequisites for an applicant in order to qualify to actually submit a complete application to the zoning board. One of the prerequisites is that the proposed development is, sits on a site um, in which the um, uh, mass housing has authorized a, 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 a site assignment. Uh, that's, the, that's the kickoff process. We intend to file our application with mass housing within the next 14 minutes. Um, um, it's, it's, it's a voluminous application. There are a lot of parts to it. Um, there's a lot of information that's provided in that application. And mass housing's process is to then write to the community saying it's in receipt of a request for a site assignment, wanting to, wanting to get um, community um, um, reaction. They typically uh, ask the community to respond within 30 days. So um, you're looking at two weeks for us to file, another 30, then you're going to get a letter from them that could take a week or two. So, and then there's another 30 days for you guys to respond. So in the next six to eight weeks, I think you should be prepared to have your response. Um, and the planning department, your planning department, you know, has familiarity with, with some of the plans. Um, they haven't seen the latest incarnation yet, but we can get a set of plans into the, into the planning department so they can see it. Um, and as I mentioned to you, the Conservation Commission uh, has had several working sessions. Um, I don't know if you could see the screen, but now that my clients are on the screen, I did like to introduce them for a second. Uh, Paul Maggiore, uh, is under Matt Maggiore, but <laughs> that's Paul with the glasses. His son, Matt, 
um, is uh, right there, and and uh, Jackie Majori, um, who happens to be Matt's sister and, and Paul's daughter, works in the company um, as well. And as you can see, it's a, it's a family-owned and run business, and they really take a lot of pride in, in what they do. I just wanted to introduce them real quick. You referenced earlier that you've notified, um, I don't know if it's a Butters or, or how much of the neighborhood, it, and at this point, is it just a notification that you've made, or have there been any meetings with... Um, there's, there's we alerted the abutters, we notified the abutters that we're going to be pursuing this development. We haven't had any uh, uh, feedback from them. The one abutter that we, 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 we've written to for a different purpose was a condominium association uh, for one of the condominium developments right near us because uh, they own the property immediately adjacent to Mill Brook. And uh, that property has become a little bit, um, how should I say, uh, not pristine. There's a lot of garbage. There's a lot of, dish, you know, things have been thrown back there. And one of the things the Conservation Commission mentioned to us that they would love to see is that area, you know, rehabilitated and, and, and cleaned up. And since it's private property, it's owned by the Condominium Association, we just can't go on there and do it. But we have already written them. Um, and told them about our project and told them about the Conservation Commission's desire that uh, this could be one of the pieces of mitigation that they would like us to try to accomplish. And we, uh, we haven't connected up with the association yet, but we're going to pursue it over the next few weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just want to, just very briefly, because I do appreciate um, you and your clients um, appearing before the board at the initial stages where it really isn't a requirement to do so. Could you just orient me in terms of um, how, how close are you or are you adjacent to the um, Highland Ave fire station? I think 1021 is Dr. Where I'm at. All right, so I need to ask you to repeat the question. Is I, didn't, I know you want me to orient you, but I didn't quite catch the rest of it. If you use the Highland Fire Station as a landmark, where is your oh, okay. development? Yeah, the, the, the fire station would be uh, to the right about four or five buildings, Matt. Um, um, and when I say to the right, I think right is going into the downtown Boston, so it's going east. Um, to the left, when I say left, I'm going west out, Mass Ave. Um, fire station's at uh, 1007. Uh, Mass Ave, and it, we were, our first building closest to that would be a 1021 Mass Ave. So 1021 to 1007, it's about, there are about four or five buildings in between the fire station and, and the proposed project site, uh, and the fire station, as I said, to the east. Something that is another Board of Commission's purview, um, as well as uh, who is, who's the owner of the land, but we've had... Um, at least one of the development, the Schwab Mill, um, that Conservation Commission has been working with, with mitigation. And it's a plus for me that that's something that you're seeing if it's something that you can work into your proposal. Uh, because the town also is, um, has d done a study on the Millbrook pretty much in its entirety and, you know, what we can do to facilitate. And the only other thing that I'd be interested in, which I would get the information because it's not a requirement, for you all to submit to the select board is um, under elevations, um, current flooding and um, proposed impacted f flooding and any flood mitigation um, from this development. And again, that's, I, you don't have to provide that to me personally. That's something you will have to provide in the process. And I know you're already planning to do that. If not have it done, just about have it done. But, um, and I'll, I'll f follow through town council. Um, in, in, in the chair, uh, the proper venue to get that. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a heads up, that's all. <laughs> Mr. Behind. Any questions? Comments? Uh, Mr. Chair, I saw at one point our town council had raised his hand. Is there anything that we needed to, to add? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, ACMI was having some issues. I was just trying to raise them to the attention of the chair. They're working around it. 
<laughs> okay. If there's a problem, they may pop up and stop it for a second, but they're okay for right now. Okay, thank you. All right, thank, thank you. you. Thank Can you, Mr. I receipt, Mr. Chair? Yes, Ms. Mahal. Uh, can we get a second? Second. second. Um, yeah, I have, I don't have any questions I mean, at this point. I mean, so once again, I appreciate I mean, your um, coming to us before um, and presenting the project um, before you have to um, to any other um, board in town. So um, on that, I mean, um, I think we can take a vote. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. Diggins? Thank you, yes. It's unanimous vote. So, thank you. So, I, I didn't catch what, what that last vote was about. I, I just saw it here. Um, I, 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 of, of your presentation. That's all. I mean, just a formality that we have received okay. your, your presentation. All right. Well, again, thank you, uh, Select Board. By the way, congratulations to everyone for your new positions. But thank you for uh, giving us some time tonight. We, we really do look forward to working with the planning department, the CONCOM, everyone else in the town uh, to uh, make this a successful job. Thank, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Well, thank you again. Have a nice evening. Okay, so moving on, uh, we'll have a discussion of the town manager search process with Mr. Corsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just want to update the board um, that the following receipt of the town ma manager's intent to, to leave on June 17th and receipt of his um, notice of resignation. We did start a process for the search, and, and when I say start a process, working with um, Karen Malloy, our, our Director of Human Resources, she is in the process of receiving quotations from various firms that would be interested in running the search process. And she has received interest from three firms. I'm going to provide the names of the firms. And um, this uh, process began during my chairmanship. It now will continue uh, with you, Mr. Diggins. But, um, the three firms are the Edward J. Collins Junior Center for Public Management, that's part of UMass Boston. Municipal Resources, Inc. is a firm in Plymouth, New Hampshire. And Community Paradigm Associates is a firm in Plymouth, Massachusetts. And so for purposes of notifying the board that we, we have that interest, uh, Ms. Malloy was interested at, at some point in having the board designate a liaison to work with her both in reviewing the quotations and also developing a process to um, determine um, timing for the, for the naming of an interim town manager and the timing for selecting the firm and continuing that process. Had some conversations with the chair about it, but I just wanted to update everybody about that process and turn it back to you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Corsi. So uh, any questions, comments, Ms. Mahan? Um, just historically in the past, um, when we've, this will be my fifth town manager search, it's the chairman and or his designee that um, chooses um, who will be the board's designee. So um, it, for me, it would either be, it's your call, right. um, either yourself or um, where Mr. Cor DeCourcy has begun this process um, for you to appoint him as the designee to continue on with the next two or three tasks that are appropriate. Um, and you don't have to make that, that decision tonight, but the, the sooner the person is designated, the, you know, the faster we can move on that. So that's, that's totally your call, but um, either yourself or Mr. DeCourcy, I think would be a, a, for consideration. Great, great. I appreciate that, this, um, that, that information, that advice. You know, so anyone else? Any comments, questions? Yes, Mr. Mahalo. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, is, is it, would it be permissible if, if the chair, does the chair have the option to designate two members, which would be less than the quorum for that process? I mean, it would have to be, be two people other than the chair, of course. Yeah. Well, I, I think, I, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry, yes, I wasn't yeah. clear. Inclusive of the chair itself, so the chair plus one other person. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Well, yes, I, I would assume, you know, as much. I mean, so it could be a duo, you know, so. Any would there be any interest with that, Mr. Heim? Is the I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, is the question whether or not the chair and another member of the board may be involved in the search process right. at your discretion? Yes, that's within your discretion. It's under a quorum and it wouldn't be a subcommittee. So you it's at your discretion. You could do so. 
Yeah. Question, Mr. Bahad, have has that been part of the practice? It's whatever the chair designates. Right. Right. Um, right. Well, well, my inclination you know, is for it to be myself in close consultation uh, with Ms. Ms. Corsi, who started the process, and so if Mrs. Corsi would. Do the honors of working with me on this. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no, I'd be happy to work with you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. So, so do we need a motion on this? No, nope, it's your designation. Right. You right. set the part. Okay. Right. Then I think we are set to move on to the next element of the agenda. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Corsi. You know, Excuse me. We'll be getting in touch with um, Mrs. Malloy, you know, probably tomorrow. Yeah, so, uh, This has disappeared on me. Oh, Thank you. Uh, so uh, next we are moving on to um, select future select board hearings uh, or meetings. And so right now our next one is scheduled for the 25th of April. I mean, my understanding is that we are going to have a fair amount of business to conduct um, before then, you know, I think. Uh, I have a question to Mr. Chaplain. I mean, were you able to talk with anyone from planning to find out uh, what we need to do with respect to the housing production plan? So my understanding, uh, yeah, Mr. Chairman, is that uh, I know the board had expressed an interest in seeing how the ARB voted tonight on the matter of uh, two-family zoning be allowed in an R0, R1. Um, depending on how they vote and then how this board reacts, procedurally, if there was an amendment to be contemplated, I think we would prefer this board make that amendment and then it be sent back to the ARB to then be readopted by the ARB. If their action tonight leaves no cause for an amendment, then we could just come back to the board and have the board again consider adoption of the plan. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Yeah, but my main question though is, is by when do we have to have our housing plan adopted? What would be the latest, or or what kind of issues do we encounter at any given point in time when we don't have a plan? So I think there's two ways to look at it. The safe harbor status that was enabled by the certification of the prior plan expires in September of this year. Okay. So I think that is the absolute, you know, end of when the board should think okay. about having this plan adopted so that it could then be ready to be certified with developments like the one that was proposed or presented to the board tonight, you know, that could start counting towards having a new plan certified and therefore, therefore providing safe harbor status yet again. Um, a more uh, practical way to look at it is the consultant's contract is over. And as, as, as time goes on, we don't, we'd prefer to not have to go back to the consultant to make tweaks or to potentially have to come um, ask questions as to try to best preserve the town's funds. Um, that's obviously less of, a, of an overarching concern for the board's consideration, so I think that the absolute drop dead I would recommend is um, before the current plan expires or the certification expires in September. All right. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chaplain. So, all right, that kind of gives a sense of, you know, we certainly don't want to wait until the last minute, you know, and and things are going to slow down a bit in, in July and August. I mean, so, so we'll want to have this, I would say, wrapped up I mean, by the end of June. I mean, and so I guess we don't have to really push that hard you know, to have an earlier meeting. Although, in my um, discussion with you this morning, Mr. Manager, you had mentioned that there are ARPA funds that we need to um, work, work on. So sometime soon, I would like to come back to the board for the board's uh, sort of full endorsement of Arlington Housing Authority spending, Food Link spending, Arlington Eats spending, uh, Chamber of Commerce spending, which relates back to a presentation the Chamber of Commerce made some time ago now, so that all those groups can access those funds and start spending them. So that's, that's one matter we would like to come back in so, sometime soon with. Uh, it's that time again for the board to consider water rate increases, so we'd like to do that sometime in the near future. Um, and there's one third less consequential one that's slipping my mind right now, but there, there were those three matters we'd like to try to get done. 
So, so start on April 25th, I mean, it's going to be town meeting. I mean, and all our meetings will be abbreviated. And I know um, from my discussion with Mr. DeCourcy that we will not be available until the 20th. You know, I, I like to have slack, you know, and, and so to the extent that we could have a meeting on that Wednesday the 20th, you know, I, I would like to do that, you know, it could potentially be a shorter meeting, maybe, you know, maybe the longest would be two hours, two and a half, you know, um, and then I think we'd be free you know, to just do an hour or so before town meeting, I mean, until the, the end of town meeting, unless of course something else came up, so, so are folks fine with a uh, meeting on the 20th, Wednesday? Yes, Ms. Hunt? Do you want to start at 7.15 or 7? Um, I'm fine with starting at 7. Or how do people feel about that? On the 20th. On the 20th. Okay. Fine? Is that okay? Yeah, all right. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yeah? Two, two things. Uh, one, myself and Attorney Heim met with the new moderator uh, this afternoon. And he's at, I don't want, I cannot, absolutely cannot speak for him, but I, do know he's considering whether or not based on recent increases in this BA2 variant, if a virtual town meeting would be preferable. And if he does move in that direction, he'll need to come before this board sooner rather than later. The, the 20th would be too late for that. So there may be a need for a brief interim meeting in that regard. Um, just to put that out there so that no one is surprised by that. Um, and then second, I, I can be here, I'm traveling home on the 20th, so I might uh, just be cutting it close, getting getting back here. Okay, all right, but, so, but someone could stand in for you. Yeah, we'll, 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 to get that work done, we'll make uh, it happen. Mr. Hahn? I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Manager. Okay, please. Mr. Chair, there's one other thing that might be helpful to have a brief meeting, which is that uh, in recent years, what we've done is we've collated all the votes and comments into a draft selectoral report for your review and making sure that it's consistent with what everybody wants to see and then there's no final edits to be made. So that would be one other agenda item that might be helpful to have um, next week if the board was inclined for a shorter meeting. Um, because my understanding from the board administrator's office is that they'll need to send the report out by the 14th. Right. Yes, yes, well, I'm definitely all in favor of that as someone who stood there several times and say, can we get that report like really fast? We were at our precinct meetings, we, so, so, so then we, so at that point, we, I understand then that it would just be four of us uh, at that point, but it'd be really just to sign off I mean, on the, on the um, select board report and maybe some other issues I mean, where I think we pretty much all be in agreement. I mean, so, so then I'm hearing uh, next Monday, the 11th, you know, a short meeting. Uh, and then, that's a question to you, Doc. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, next Monday, the, the 11th, you know, and then uh, still, though, another meeting on the 20th, you know, uh, hopefully shorter, too, you know, and then the 25th. So, my question to you, Mr. Chapterlane, um, is do you think the moderator would be ready at that point to come before the select board to discuss what he likes to do, he wants to do regarding town meeting? So my conversation, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, my conversation with the moderator was simply put, whichever route he prefers to follow, we will work to be ready. Right. But that if he would like to pursue a virtual town meeting, we need to know as soon as possible as to s start earnestly working to prepare it, and, but also not have wasted effort. Um, so I, I, I said, you know, I, I would very much like guidance from him in the next day or two. Right, Mr. Heim? Um, and I'm sorry if we're a little bit like Statler and Waldorf yeah. right now. <laughs> uh, but I just want to remind uh, the board and the public that the process under um, state law while the um, sort of COVID allowances are being made is that the moderator essentially requests the select board's permission to hold um, town meeting virtually. It has to be an agreement between the moderator and the balance of the select board. And then town meeting must actually also vote to agree to conduct its business virtually. So there are a lot of different checkpoints along the way. Um, and so 
we, we would, what we would need is to know whether the moderator wants to initiate that process and leave enough time for this body to decide. You have up to 10 business days. Uh, we did notice the town meeting warrant, uh, thanks to the, your office, we noticed the town meeting warrant is both in person and virtually, um, depending on conditions. But it would probably also be a good idea to make sure that all town meeting members get an official notice if, if the uh, town meeting is going to be conducted virtually rather than in town hall. Did I miss anything? No. Yeah. Thank you. That answered a question that I was going to ask. So uh, here's a question. No, I was just going to ask whose choice it was, whether it's virtual or in person, but Attorney Heim just answered. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I was wondering why the select board had to be a part of it too, and he just answered that also. So, uh, so okay, you know, all right. So it's coming clear, you know. Uh, next Monday, the eleventh, a meeting um, is their preferred time, folks. I'd yeah. prefer to stick with seven fifteen if we can, because I'll be coming in hot from the Arlington rink. That's fine. Well, is that generally the case for you too? Would you prefer all the meetings? No, 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 no. Just that Monday. I yeah. mean. Yeah. It's 15 minutes. 15 no. minutes could help me <laughs> get the kids no. fed in here. Yeah. So 7:15. I mean, I prefer the 15 minutes on the front later on the front end than the back end. But it's up to uh, no, you know. I can make it work if if the board. That's fine, especially if if especially if we're coming here. I mean, I, mean, I really don't like for people to rush. Me when trying to go from point A to point B, okay, so so um, so if seven fifteen works for you, if, if and I think it's going to be a short meeting, so it can even be a little later, but uh, but right now we'll go with seven fifteen. Okay, so seven fifteen on the eleventh, you know, and and for the twentieth, you know, we'll do. That's a Wednesday. Yep. Seven o'clock. Yep. That's huh? Okay. You know and. On uh, the 25th, uh, that will be before that will be before um, town meeting. Um, usually, it's like a, a shortish meeting, right? You know. So, uh, what time do you normally start? We, we normally start at seven, and then right. what happens is, depending on the agenda, once it hits 7:59, the chair and town manager definitely have to go down. Right. But I, I am going to have a conversation with the chair for any. Um, Town meeting nights that if for some reason we still have business and the rest of us have to stay up here, um, I'm, I'm going to ask the chair to uh, have a conversation with it. If you could discuss with the manager and town council, um, I always think town council should also go down. And if we have attorney Cunningham here, you know, maybe he could step into that role so that both meetings have council available to them. So if you could just work that out. What's been done in the past basically is. Um, the town manager uh, goes down and the chair goes down and everybody else stays. But um, I think if we can, um, I think town meeting does avail itself of having attorney Heim there. And, and since we have attorney Cunningham, we can have the best of both worlds. Yeah. So oh, yeah. if that's okay with you, because it's ultimately your meeting. Yeah, that's fine. So that's totally fine with me. You know, so, so that takes care. So April 25th, you know, Monday we'll do seven o'clock, and uh, let's um, try to book out some more meetings. You know, so let's try to um, at least get through May. You know, so I think we can. I see you nodding. So, so, so you you just keep nodding until you want me to stop. All right, and so I'll take my cues from you. Uh, uh, so, um, May. I think we can assume that we'll be meeting, meeting um, at least two weeks into May. You know, so. Uh, so, it's, sorry. It's very optimistic. <laughs> okay, thank you. So, I like your gusto. So we already have the second um, scheduled in May. So, so let's um, aim for the the sixteenth. You know. No, uh, So, uh, is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you all okay with the sixteenth? Six weeks would be six weeks. Yeah. So, okay. So, um, yeah, the sixteenth. Mean and. <laughs> Will we still be going in town meeting then? Probably, you know. So uh, we won't. Um, we won't take any bets, you know. So uh, and then the next day is Memorial. The next two Mondays after that is Memorial Day. So so then we will come back. Let's say um, two weeks after that would be 
the 13th of June. You know, so let's um, land on that. Thank you, Mahan. Um, and 715 on June 13th. Uh, yes? Would it be 715 on May 16th as well? Just so I can get the calendar. Correct. No, no, on May 16th, assuming that we're still yeah. in town meeting, 7, 7 o'clock, you know. So, yeah. And, and if that, does, would that work for you to have heard? Yep. Okay, all right. And, yeah, so, yeah, I'm hearing a recommendation for one more, and probably Ashley would, Ms. Meyer would prefer that too. So, uh, no, yeah, and that's still when we're doing two meetings a month. So, the, six, the 27th works, folks? Mm -hmm. All right, 715? All right. Great. So, all right. We've got things planned out through June. And thank you very much. And, uh, so next we have a warrant article hearing and a special town meeting articles to review, Article 6. Uh, it's appropriation for taking Stratton School Safe School Program. So, Mr. Heim. So uh, I have good news for the board in terms of the efficiency of the meeting. It looks like this uh, was put on a, as a placeholder on the warrant. Essentially what's happening is we've you've approved some safe routes takings in the past for the Dallin School. I believe another one for the Stratton School as well. And essentially the idea behind this project is that we have either temporary or permanent easements to install or improve sidewalks on walking routes to school. It doesn't appear at this point in time that we have a finalized list of properties that would be subject to eminent domain or a great cost estimate for exactly how much it would cost. The good news here is that most of the project is funded by MassDOT, so it's all money that's provided uh, through the hard work of uh, the senior transportation planner, Mr. Amstutz, and that team that uh, goes towards um, the actual improvements themselves, but we pay for the eminent domain takings. And since we don't have a solid figure on those numbers, uh, in terms of the amount, and we don't even know exactly where those uh, locations are yet. Um, I think it's prudent to just uh, have take this placeholder off the warrant and um, not even table it. We just there was a placeholder on the warrant that we needed to put on in advance schedule. So at this point in time, it does not appear to be going forward. So there's no action that's necessary from the board. But I saw Mr. Oh, so you don't need a motion for no action? Okay. I, I don't. I don't believe so. No. Well, we'll go off your guidance. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't say I don't believe so. No, we don't. All right. All right. Okay. Well, one for your motion. Okay, so we move on to final votes and comments. And on uh, the several articles to review. And, and you know, I can read them all. I can just list the numbers. Or I can just assume that everyone has them. And yes, Mr. Mr. Heim. Mr. Chair, if I may make a suggestion, it would actually be helpful for me to walk through them um, um, and, and then see if the board has specific comments or questions. But there's a few that I'd like to make a few comments on and to recognize the work of people that put them together. Would that be okay? That would be perfect. Thank you, Mr. Heim. Okay, terrific. So, uh, members of the board, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Article 7 is your... Um, the establishment of the Young Arlington Collaborative. You'll see I put some notes in um, that I was hoping that would clarify a few things. They're really minor tweaks um, to the uh, draft vote that the study committee put in front of you. Uh, one, the first one is really to just try to clarify uh, what I think becomes a little bit clearer later in the, in the um, draft motion that uh, the two standing committee members from, are basically drawn from the residents of each of the respective precincts. The next one was just confirming the age. I believe there was a little bit of um, discrepancy whether it was 39 or 35, so I've left it at 39 um, as was in the draft vote. The next one is um, in uh, section two, subparagraph A, Three, uh, saying that voting at standing committee meetings, each precinct shall only have one vote that is cast by either representative of that precinct as set forth in section 1E and F above. It's really, again, just a clarifying note, trying to make it clear that um, at any given time, there's only going to be um, one representative who's sort of serving as a voting member from each precinct. Um, the Can next I just ask on that? Yes. Just thinking all scenarios out, 
Um, I understand it's defined, I think you said, by one E and F. Um, and there's a default that if, depending on the year, whether it's odd or even, defaults to the standing committee member. Is there a double default that if for some reason that person also isn't there, that the committee can move on, continue to vote, and that vote isn't, like, does that tie up the process or no? I just don't see that defined. So um, if I understand the question correctly, what you're talking, what you're referencing, uh, Vice, Madam Vice Chair, is that under Section F, it outlines that in odd number of years, certain folks are the voting member, and in even number of years, the other part of that sort of team or duo from each precinct is the voting member. Um, and does the, um, does the uh, bylaw as drafted make it clear what happens if it's vacant? I believe it does. If you've got like a youth member who's vacant, I believe that the young adult member gets to vote in their stead and vice versa. Okay, that's fine. I just want to make sure that the committee, because that can happen, <laughs> and um, that it doesn't slow them down from doing their business. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chair. Thank yeah. you, Attorney. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Um, section three, um, <clears throat> I made a few uh, suggested changes to the way that the draft bylaw talks about task groups. Um, task groups are modeled uh, on the Envision Arlington model. And the, the critical sort of piece here to just understand is that to my understanding of the history of Vision 2020, which later became Envision Arlington, is that the idea of task groups is for them not to function the way committees and commissions do that have a, a set membership and therefore um, behave like any other sort of entity of the government. The idea was for there to be an exchange of information and ideas and for task groups almost to serve as a forum. Um, because of that, we haven't traditionally held or believed that the open meeting law, for example, applies to them because they don't function in quite the same way as a committee or commission. There's no um, quorum, there's no set membership. And so this is just sort of a tweaking of some of the language to make it uh, clarify that task groups really have more participants than they have members. And then you'll see um, uh, some later modifications that um, are consistent with, I think, what the um, excellent draft that the study committee put together is trying to sort of realize, which is that a task group um, functions as, again, a forum for exchange of ideas. And while they don't have quorums or they don't necessarily have independent authority of the standing committee, um, it's still a good practice for them to post agendas, to keep minutes of meetings, um, even though we wouldn't necessarily say that the open meeting law applies because we wouldn't say that they're uh, employees of, uh, of the town, uh, per se, or that the conflict of interest laws, things like that, apply to um, task groups created by the entity. And then there's a minor tweak um, uh, to a few other things. So that's the sum and substance of the adjustments that um, the legal department made to uh, what's otherwise a, a really, really, really strong um, draft bill. Thank you, Mr. Hyde. So, any comments, my colleagues? Okay, we'll move on. Um, Article 11, um, uh, I want to just point out the excellent work of uh, Deputy Town Council Mike Cunningham, who uh, put together the draft for comment for Article 11. Um, if folks have any questions or you'd like to make any adjustments, um, Attorney Cunningham's here to answer any of those questions. I'm certainly uh, ready and able to adjust any um, vote and comment if there's anything in the language that you think needs to be changed for your final report. So, um, any comments? Yes, Mr. Mr. Corsi. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and, and thank you, Attorney Cunningham and, and, and Attorney Heim. And, and one question I had had to do with Section 6, um, the reference to employees. We had talked about yeah. it, referring to employees of the town. So I'm wondering if there's any language that we could add on that. Uh, Mr. Cunningham? Uh, um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. DeCourcy, yes, I think there could be a change to Section 6 by adding town employees to each one of those sections, A, B, and C. I think that would be consistent with the discussion we had with the board, the board had last time and, 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 and make, it, the, make, the make the draft motion consistent with what you're, what you're interested, interested in, in the town meeting. Great. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Helen? Okay, I thought, I thought you were here. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> 
Excuse so, me. So, the, I'm actually having an issue with um, Section 6, you know, and the, uh, the, the, um, the paid sick leave. Um, I'm, I'm really struggling with this because a, when, when we initially had the meeting, I, I was kind of asking a theoretical question like, I mean, how, to how many people, how many people ultimately have a benefit from this meeting? Uh, and, and it just seems like it, it could be a lot, you know, uh, and especially when you take into account that I mean, a person can be in multiple domestic partnership relationships, you know, and if, as much as I, I support me, what I mean, the the general thrust of of um, the bylaw, I mean, especially the initial one that uh, allowed for I mean, domestic partnerships beyond two, I mean, um, I just I just wonder I me mean, to what extent the town is is kind of risking some financial hardship I me mean, by by having the possibility of so many people. A person being on lots of leave, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and so I, I know that practically there's not much risk, but theoretically there could be, you know, and so to what extent do we protect ourselves, I mean, from uh, theoretically high risk, you know, I mean, is there some way we can build some protection, you know, um, against that into the bylaw, you know, Mr. Hurt? Yeah, I mean, it, I certainly understand the concern. I think it, when we were first going through the language of this article in relative to health benefits, and I think someone mentioned that another municipality was talking about health benefits, the first thing in my mind was not to you know, denigrate what we're trying to accomplish here is that all of a sudden we're going to have a lot of domestic partnerships where you can qualify for health benefits, and I think that's along the lines. But I don't anticipate for paid sick leave that somebody would abuse the privilege. And I don't think you're talking about abuse anyways, but I think in the end, we, I think the, the article as written accomplishes what the proponents are trying to, and we could always, if there was an instance where it was an overly burdensome to the town, we could change that. We have the ability to change a bylaw. So. Ms. Pond? Um, this may not be a, an appropriate comparison, but at some point under um, Section 6, I think it's B that the Chairman is um, referencing right now, would this sort of a designation and, and relationship fall under the same parameters as we have currently um, with our town employees where FMLA kicks in um, and that if for some reason there was a town employee um, that found themselves um, in a situation where it was for an extended um, amount of time, does this um, provision look at that situation in totality so that FMLA kick family medical leave act so I'm going to say FMLA for the rest of the day um, or does it is it separated in the sense that each relationship and each dependent child or children of that relationship stands alone or is it a common does FMLA kick in um, in totality or is each relationship a standalone and FMLA applies to each relationship as a standalone? I have to look to Attorney Cunningham for that. Is answer. that right, Mr. Chair? Yeah, oh, yeah, I sure get it. Yeah, thanks. And if I'm asking a question that's kind of stupid and out there, just tell me. Not a stupid question at all. <laughs> um, in this instance, I would distinguish sick leave from FMLA. It's my understanding that it's a separate procedure, and I would say that the, the language of this bylaw, the proposed bylaw, would not permit uh, FMLA specifically, but uh, that's my, I haven't looked at the M FMLA, I'd have to look at it specifically, but I do think it's a distinguishing factor. It's sick leave, not necessarily the, the, the extra step of, F of FMLA, which is additional hurdles are required to, to go on that type of leave. 
But, but I'm thinking like if you're a town employee, you're out in sick leave, there's a certain point where we say you can't be out in sick leave anymore, you have to take FMLA. If you're uh, currently a town employee and you take personal time, calm time, and if you can take sick leave to take care of a child, there's a point we say um, you got to go FMLA route or something else. So the, does the same apply here or are you saying no? I mean, the, ma the manager may comment uh, on, on the distinguishing factors of FMLA, but my understanding of how that works is that sick leave is something that you're automatically provided, and it's consistent with the language in this proposed bylaw that they'd be provided those benefits is consistent with what town employees receive. FMLA is not mentioned here, and I don't think it automatically would apply if the sick leave was exhausted. I think that's right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chair. You're welcome, Mr. Mahan. Yeah. You know, but this, I mean, the bereavement, I mean, a, a person can die just once, I mean, uh, uh, and particularly even parental leave, I mean, uh, I mean there's just so much, I, mean, I, I just, financial risks there. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm thinking about this, I mean, and defending this to town meeting, I mean, uh, so I'm asking you all to help me think this through because if this comes up, in town meeting, and I'm defending this. I mean, I just need to have I me mean, something cogent to say, you know, to our fellow um, residents, I me, mean, uh, so that we can move it forward. You know, I mean, otherwise, I think we we stand the risk of having it stripped. I mean, at town meeting, you know. So, yes, Mr. Chair. Mr. Well, I'll defer to the manager, uh, or let Mr. Chaplain speak first, Mr. Chair. Um, th thank you. Uh, Council and thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I mean, this is venturing into opinion, right, and not advice. But I suppose I would be more concerned with any of us having to defend why we were identifying these partnerships as equal. You know, we're, we're trying to provide coverage and acknowledgement of domestic partnerships equal to the way we recognize uh, marriage. I'm not sure how we would, with a straight face, justify carving out certain benefits um, and, and not feel like we were still creating separate classes within the recommendation. So that's, as you're saying this, that's my sort of, you know, personal reaction to it is how would we justify still, um, you know, creating those dividing lines. Um, but in terms of risk, I, I, I'm not aware of any evidence I haven't thoroughly researched it, but I'm not aware of any evidence that would suggest that we are out of the box opening ourselves up to significant financial risk. Were things to change over time and cost or risk was to grow, I think we could consider alterations, but I don't think that with adoption this year, we are opening the door to significant financial liability or risk um, as an immediate threat. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Helleth? Um, it, are we aware if Finance Committee heard this article and if they had any comments about the financial aspects of this? I can't, Mr. Chairman, may I? No, 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 I, I can't say with certainty, but I'm not aware that they've heard this article. Let me, let me actually add clarity to that. They did not ask me or anyone in my office for any type of financial analysis in regards to this article. So um, to you, Mr. Chapter Lane, because you said you weren't aware of, of any um, similar situation where an entity of Ms. Fowler's at risk. I was under the impression that this was unique, that this was, a f that we were first, no, we're not first in doing I mean, multiple domestic partnerships. I'm not, I guess I may, I may have misspoke. I didn't recall saying, uh, talking about other municipalities. Yeah. Um, I, I just, I, I don't, I, I don't think, frankly, I'm not, I'm not aware that we have a large or even any, any significant population of those in a domestic partnership that would immediately be seeking to get the benefit of oh, these. Oh, gotcha. Benefits. I understand. Yeah, okay. I understand. I mean, currently, yeah. Um, and, and I, I really appreciate the fact that we, that we feel that we can't carve out and treat people unequally. And look, I mean, I want to get here. You know, I just feel we, we, I just feel a kind of responsibility we, to the to town financially, but also, like I said, I really feel that I need to be able to argue this I mean, um, well I mean, in front of, of, um, of town meeting. You know? and, and so I, I, I just feel that, that ultimately 
it's a social risk. You know, I mean, we're trying to make it such that the people can engage in whatever relationships they want, I mean, and then have equal protection to any other kind of relationship, but who bears the risk of that? You know, and, and I, I just feel it should be, I mean, there comes a point where we just can't absorb the cost, I mean, potentially, and I just want to try and prepare ourselves, I me mean, for that, you know, that possibility, even if it's a, a, a low one, at least theoretically, but maybe I'm just getting I mean, uh, too much in the weeds or something. Mr. Jones, Corsi? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I was just going to say, I think the town manager just made a strong argument as to, to, to why we would have the language yeah. that we would. And, and as, as he said, if, if, if in the future, if, if there is a need to, to seek a change in the bylaw, that's, that, that would be the time to do it. Mr. Cunningham? Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I, I believe that the proponents of the article uh, and the draft language have kind of walked the line up to the health care benefits issue that I think the Chair is referring to, and the case law that applies to that would really run the risk of, uh, of running afoul. Uh, the, the Attorney General's Municipal Law Unit would, would, ha would take, take a hard look at that. So I think that's, in my view, the language that is drafted. It was a deliberate attempt to walk the line towards that but not over it so that the leave issues and the financial implications that would come with health care benefits provision were avoided. Yeah, I understand the, the health care aspect of it. I mean, it's more the, the, the leave part, because mm -hmm. I mean, that does put this out. Granted, it's, 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 it's a minimal risk, I mean, and, and I mean, perhaps I'm overthinking it. I mean, and, and so we can, we can move on. Mr. Hurd? Yeah? Yes, two things. One, I got a text that the sound's not working on ACMI, so I don't know if that affects our meeting here. Um, and then, Again, I would a like to err on the side of the language that was provided to us by the proponents, and I think it, you know this certainly is a concern. And if it's a concern that town meeting members have, we can, we can debate it and potentially have an amendment. But I think as it's written here, I don't see a major influx of financial loss by the town. And again, if there's some wildly unexpected you know, occurrence, then we can take it up at a future future town meeting. But I mean, I'm comfortable with the language. Right. Yeah. So on that, you know, I we've just discussed it. I, mean, I don't think there's any um, suggestion of any kind of change. You know, we're just going to pause action a little bit I mean, to see if we can resolve what. I'm sorry. No problem. No, 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 no. So, do you need us to pause? Meets while you work out? No, I, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. We're uh, we received a note on one of the later uh, votes and comments uh, in the chat, and uh, right. we're trying to make sure that we address it for the for the board. Okay, fine, fine, fine. So then, um, whenever you're ready to move on. Excuse okay. me, Mr. Yeah, Chairman. Yeah, Mr. Chair. If, if, if I, just, just one other item in the comment that occurs. I mean, this can be done in final votes and comments, but the, the second to last line talks about the proposed amendments to the bylaw will likely be subject to review. I think we can count 100 percent that they will be subject to review. So I, I'd suggest that we take strike the word likely from, from a comment. I second that. If we need one second. Thank you. So do we need a motion on that, Mr. Hunt? Uh, well, it, it depends on whether you guys want to vote on each one of these individually or you want to um, take them as a slate together. Because if you want to take them as a slate together, what I will do is take a motion to uh, approve the votes and comments as amended by the board's comments. I, I think we just take them all. Yeah, uh, so we won't take them all <laughs> so, at once. Yeah, so uh, you can continue, Ms. Hahn. So I think Article 13 is fairly straightforward. It's a resolution. I appreciate, again, uh, Mr. Fisher's um, proposal of a language after having the dialogue with the board and uh, the board shift towards a resolution. Um, if the board doesn't have any comment, this is the language as drawn up by Mr. Fisher with the comment uh, drawn up by myself. Um, Article 14, I think, is fairly straightforward. Yeah. Yep. Um, on Article 15, uh, I just want to, A, um, thank the uh, folks um, who, the proponents of this article, who uh, submitted some uh, helpful language to try to um, 
develop this uh, proposed suite of changes and Mr. Cunningham for his hard work. I think there was one note that we received, I'm sorry, while the meeting was happening on the chat <laughs> that talked about an inconsistency that some of the uh, proponents had noticed in the vote. Oh, I'm sorry, I think I've got the wrong one. This is um, the abutter notice. So yes, this is the abutter notice. Um, I hope this captures the board's intent with respect to Mr. Schlickman's proposal. And then finally, Article 16. Uh, this is the one where I'm thanking the mm. proponents for their helpful suggestions and Mr. Cunningham for his uh, work. Mr. Cunningham, is there an adjustment that needs to be made to the vote? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, there was a comment that just came in. I was trying to read it right now. But uh, <laughs> there was one change that I thought would be helpful uh, if the board wanted to consider it. In section 3D, mm -hmm. 2C which regards residents' uh, use during the transition period. Mm -hmm. It does down the bottom talk about as the phase out period being uh, March 15th, 2026. But in section C in the, in the first line, it talks about a transition period through the end of 25 or March 25. I think it would make more sense to put that to 26 as well, yes. which I think would accurately reflect the, the board's concerns about resident use and extending that beyond the commercial use. Yes, thank you, Mr. Honey. It's kind of so, Mr. Chair, I'd like to move that amendment. Second. Thank you, Mr. Cunningham. So, um, any more discussion on that? So, just for clarification, Mr. Cunningham, as I'm reading this, and I should mention I'm not playing Wordle on my phone. My <laughs> iPad is not working, so that's why I'm I'm trying to read not this. Not Wordle again. I can't to that, Mr. Um, so the way that we have amended this essentially pushes what's what they're trying to accomplish out until the, the transit. So they're like in July of this year, landscape companies can still use their leaf blowers because that's within the transition period. Correct? Yes. yes. Correct. So this essentially takes effect after the transition period ends. Mr. Cunningham, does that make sense? Whereas, when, <laughs> my understanding with the, the article was originally pr proposed, they allowed leaf blowers to be used in the spring and then over the summer, they, as quickly as this summer, the, the contractors weren't allowed to use the leaf blowers. Now this essentially pushes out the restrictions until the end of the transition period. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yes, Mr. Hurd is correct. Thank you. Okay. And just a follow up on that. So for, for 2 A, B, and C, all 2025 becomes 2026, or is it just 2 C? I think it's just uh, Section C, Madam Vice Chair. But it'll, it would apply to the entire section. Okay. So Meaning well, resident users. So well, just 2 A commercial and municipal user transition has. 2025 but go that, ahead that would that would remain the same that was my understanding based on the board's discussion that okay. 2025 would be the limit for commercial users but they wanted to be some provision for residents okay. who may have purchased equipment just a longer right. time yeah. period that would I extend apologize. It. thank you no thanks thanks I mean I, I had lost track of that too so <laughs> you know so I'm not quite sure I understood Mr. Hurd's um, question but I'll, I'll, I'll go back and watch the recording you know but Everyone else is fine, you know, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm good. Yes, Mr. Hurd? I'm mean, sorry, Mr. Helmuth? Yeah, yeah, close enough. <laughs> How was it Hurd? You know? <laughs> um, just to comment on this, I think that, uh, you know, I think we, we land in a good place in the language, but it just occurs to me that you know, one of the reasons that we wanted to give a longer bit of runway for homeowners is, you know, is because of the consequences of having to replace equipment. And I think I'd like to suggest uh, to the town manager and, and the town staff that we find a way to start that education process early, um, so that we, you know, so that people know, be, you know, as they're thinking about a future replacement of equipment, um, that they have as much warning as, as possible. And uh, you know, we'll certainly need won't just be the town's responsibility. I think the proponents would be, you know, would be a, have a good network um, to do that. But that's just a kind of an encouragement to all of us to to do what we can. And I think one of the beneficial side effects of that early education could be that homeowners might decide to make the switch sooner just because of the awareness you know so um so just a suggestion on implementation we get there if the town meeting sees fit to pass this of course thank you mr chair thank you Mr. Helmuth. 
so, so we'll just incorporate that amendment I mean, when we do our final vote. Yeah. So, is it time? And then our, our, our next one is Article 18. Sorry, I'm not sure what happened to the heading there. <laughs> I know, I was going to say. All right, right, go right ahead. From comment to voted. Uh, <laughs> but that's, this is Article 18. This is our uh, use of second generation anticoagulant rodenticides. Um, again, I'm, I'm grateful for the work of uh, Ms. Crowder and Mr. Uh, Thiel, the proponents of this article, or the primary proponents of this article, in uh, developing a, a bylaw that, um, based on the board's discussion, uh, focuses on uh, registration of licensed pest professionals in Arlington and notifications of where they're deploying second generation anticoagulant rodenticides. I want to make a few things clear for the board and for the public and for everybody else that this does not require notification or registration for anybody except for licensed pr pest professionals who are employing this specific uh, rodenticide poison. So it's not a general requirement that all licensed, uh, licensed pest management professionals have to register with the town. It's if you want to use second generation uh, anticoagulant rodenticides, you have to register with the town, you have to give the town notice of when, you're, and, when and where you're deploying them. Um, so there's a licensing fee associated, uh, there's, a, um, there's a licensing fee associated with it. I thought it would be better for the board to give, for the board to recommend a bylaw that would give the health department the discretion to establish what that fee is. And then there's a fairly aggressive penalty uh, schedule. I want to note that there's one thing that I'm a little bit uncertain of. I'm a little bit uncertain of our ability to pull somebody's um, basically license to apply pesticides in Arlington, but I thought it was a, wor a worthwhile compromise in terms of letting folks know that we mean business about it. That is probably the provision of this that I'm most concerned would be severed by uh, the municipal law unit. Um, and then the further vote is a very simple, straightforward authorization for special legislation uh, to allow us to regulate rodenticides more in Arlington. In other words, uh, eventually pass a bylaw prohibiting it. Uh, we, as we've talked about this a lot, it's unlikely that, um, it's not unlikely, it's almost certain that we would not get that authority through just a bylaw. That we would have to get that authority from the legislature. I don't think that we should um, have any uh, I don't. I think my understanding is that it takes Representative Rogers already has a bill that um, attempts to do this at the state level. Perhaps this would be helpful uh, in providing for the momentum of it, or maybe it would provide an opportunity for a pilot for a test case for Arlington to do it. Um, there's a little bit, and then um, unless folks have any questions about that, um, uh, Mr. Hobbs. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I, I noticed that the draft for the Home Rule petition, uh, well, first of all, thank you very much to you and your, and your staff for a lot of work on this. Um, and I know you worked hard with the proponents, um, so I'm grateful for that. Uh, but on the draft of the Home Rule petition, it just mentions the potential, including prohibited use by licensed commercial applicators, but it says nothing about private use by you know, private property owners. Is there a rationale for that, Mr. Mr. That would be exceedingly difficult. What we would essentially be doing is saying that folks can't or shouldn't purchase or own um, second generation anticoagulant rodenticides, which you can buy on Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, that would also put us at greater risk for not only going up against the state laws um, Pesticide Control Act, mm -hmm. but the EPA's determination that these are saleable products. Um, so in addition uh -huh. to having a preemption on a state law, you know, level, if we're just saying you're not allowed to purchase and own these. Yeah. Um, so if, if you wanted me to add, um, I, I would, it would be very easy for me to well, add it and we can see what happens. Yeah, well, I guess a further question would be, so, so yeah, no, that, that makes sense so that we have, you're, you're concerned even under a home rule petition, which by definition, you know, gets around the problem of the AG's review because we're doing it the right way, but right. if the legislature grants it that we might have a problem with EPA um, on this. Um, wh what I guess the scenario I'm concerned about, you know, th this is maybe getting a little bit ahead of the game, but if we were to be successful and we were to come back and draft a bylaw, would there be a way to prevent um, a straw purchase for homeowners to, you know, to, 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 to buy the SGARs and provide them to the contractors, even if contractors were barred from applying them? I feel pretty good that we would we could have a bylaw that prohibits a licensed professional from 
I mean, th there's any number of things that a person can buy that are illegal and they can ask a professional, you know, to utilize in their home. You mm -hmm. can ask somebody, oh, I got this great asbestos tile. It's for installation. <laughs> Why don't you just install it? That doesn't make it uh, 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 legal or in consistent with the building code to install asbestos as insulation. I'm not too worried about that. I, 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 I do see and recognize your point that, you know, uh, maybe a more likely scenario is to just disincentivize someone to call a licensed, site, a licensed mm -hmm. pest management professional mm -hmm. says, I'll just buy, you know, a bunch of this uh, second generation right. rodenticide online and scatter around my yard. So. Yeah, yeah and, and I think in that scenario too, um, you know, we can end up having more environmental harm because, you know, the licensed applicators who are responsible, which I think is very, most of them, you know, try to minimize mm. the use of that and, and use that you know, carefully. So th these are things to worry about if we are, get so far as to get permission from the state. I guess I'm also comfortable with the, with the, the formulation here, which is, it mentions uh, commercial applicators, but, but not exclusively. It just says including prohibiting. So, you know, that seems the, 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 the bulk of this uh, says may regulate, you know, the use. So I, I, I think we're probably fine okay. as is. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. No. Chair, I, should, I, should, I should say one thing. There is a slight com dis miscommunication between myself and the proponents. I was expecting that there was going to be some sort of draft resolution. Um, I, I haven't seen any draft resolution language yet. So this is the type of thing that um, if we're going to have a meeting on the 11th, I will try to get the resolution vote and comment sorted out for the select board's final approval and its uh, select board report on Monday. But the, the resolution, I haven't seen a, a version of a resolution yet and I just didn't want to cut out uh, those good folks from all the good work that they've done and just draft something whole cloth. So um, if that makes sense to the board, um, I'll just proceed with the final uh, vote and comment. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sure they, I mean, my sense from talking with them and certainly I mean, from the hearing is that they really are planning on doing that resolution. So, so uh, a, either they have forgotten, I mean, which I doubt, or they're somehow mixed up as to the timing of things. No, I, I just think it's a miscommunication. I think, I think huh? that's right. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, so, um, so Article 21, I think we all agree that there's uh, no action to be taken because there's a recommendation to form the Youth Collaborative. The CDBG article is fairly straightforward. Um, youth services, uh, no action. Revolving funds, all we need is the table that uh, the comptroller inserts. Um, endorsement of parking benefit district expenditures is also, again, uh, fairly straightforward. And then um, the last remaining article for your approval and a vote, final vote and comment tonight, uh, and that will only leave the resolution about uh, rodenticides to be ironed out, um, is the resolution uh, as forwarded by uh, Ms. Dre, um, and I believe voted on by this board. So if there's no further questions, that's all we have. Yes, Mr. Discorsi. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. <coughs> Just one thing on our Article 75, and, and uh, you normally where proponents have a resolution, it, it's their language that goes before town meeting. The only thing here where there is reference to a vote of the select board, and it's on, I'm looking at the, on the last page of Attorney Himes' memo, the, uh, in Attorney Cunningham's memo, the second whereas um, discusses the select board recently voted to approve a reprecincting map with the specific goal of increasing the diversity of town meeting. I think where it's referencing our actions, I, I'd prefer to see language in there that included the specific goal because it wasn't the only goal that we had when we adopted the reprecincting map, the one person, one vote. There was many other, cons other considerations that we had. So. Mr. Corsi, what are you recommending that so we So recommending that we insert that in, that included or in, before the specific goal. So if we strike the word with, Mr. DeCorsi, That's right. and put in the words which included, so it would read, whereas the select board recently voted to approve a reprecincting map, which included the specific goal of increasing diversity of town meeting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Second. Uh, you know, any discussion? No, I heard, I heard that included, and I heard which included, so I just said, was that a grammar correction? Never. Who, who's right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll take either one. I'm comfortable with the that.
that, but I'll, I'll, I'll defer to the witch. <laughs> the select board is always correct. <laughs> oh, that included. <laughs> oh my goodness. Mr. Okay. Uh, so, uh, oh, Mr. Hamlet. Oh, Ms. Mahana, go, go please. And, and then Mr. Cuddy. So, so. Oh no, I thought I, I think we're, I'm hearing some more questions, so I, do, I won't make a motion yet. Okay, Mr. Hurt. I mean, Mr. Hamlet. Man, it's, a, it's an honor, <laughs> Mr. Chair. Um, I, and I, I just noticed this in reading this, despite having looked at this um, over the weekend. Immediately above the, the passage that Mr. DeCourcy just, just noted, and this is a consequence of the excellent education uh, by the Town Council on the Town Manager Act that it, we, the Board has received this year. Uh, my understanding it, it refers to Select Board creating a DEI division, which we cannot do. Only the Town Manager can do that. Um, and I think probably further to the community equity audit, I think we endorsed it, um, but we didn't approve it. So, um, and this is a difficult thing to do on the fly. I mean, my personal suggestion would be to acknowledge the work of the town manager um, in working with the select board to do both of those things, because I think that the town manager's leadership has been real and substantial um, in, in creating that division in increasing its staffing through ARPA and, and, and in partnership with the select board. So if we could find a way to do that, um, what's in language, Mr. Heim? Mr. Chairman? Yes. So if we could strike that provision and uh, revise it so as to read, uh, by supporting the town manager's creation of a DEI division and voting to uh, uh, support and approve the community equity audit. Works for me. Second. All right, any discussion? Yes, Ms. Mahan. Ms. Mahan. Um, if it's appropriate, Mr. Chair, if I could make a motion to move approval of final votes and comments subject to the um, addendum of the uh, aforementioned amendments. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. So on a uh, vote, uh, a motion by Ms. Mahan and a second by Mr. Corsi. Mr. Hahn? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Thank you all for your patience and feedback on all these matters. Thank you, Mr. Hellman. Thank you. So, uh, we're moving on to correspondence received and a letter concerning utility polls. I um, guess we will refer this to the town manager. I yeah, that's fine. Uh -huh. yeah. So, I guess um, first to. So thank moved. Second. Uh, any discussion? All right. You know, so I get to swivel my head again as Mr. <laughs> Hyde <laughs> calls the, the roll on this. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Hellman? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. Dickens? Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Thanks. So, um, new business? Uh, no new business. No new business. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hey, so, yeah, just a couple of brief pieces, Mr. Chairman. First, uh, because we were uh, semi-late last Wednesday, I didn't share it, but last Wednesday in Town Hall, the police department hosted a coffee with a cop event for senior citizens. That was well attended by both the Arlington Police Department and members of the community, and I just wanted to congratulate and thank the APD and the staff and the team for being there to engage with the community. Uh, related to that, Chief Flaherty will be speaking at an ICMA, International City Managers Association, regional conference in Boston this Thursday on the innovative practices that have been implemented over the past several years by the Arlington Police Department. So, and that she was uh, chosen by someone from the ICMA who reached out to me and said, I know the Arlington Police Department does great work. Could the chief come and be part of this panel? So I think that's an additional great testament to the work done by the Arlington Police Department. Uh, beyond that, um, I wanted the board to know, if it hasn't seen it already, the annual report is available electronically and on the town's website, and the annual budget and financial plan, which I know I shared with the board electronically, is being printed and then will also be shared on the website as well. So this, is a, this has been a, a, a big week for annual reporting documents becoming available for the public. And that's all I have for new business. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Uh, Mr. Corsi? Uh, no new business. Yeah. Mr. Hurd? I just mentioned that the with the return of the annual police and fire game coming up unfortunately my son has a game in rockland so i'll maybe catch the end of it but um you know you never know the fire team's pretty stacked this year but everyone likes an underdog so 
we'll be looking out for that. And then I just wanted to say it gives our meetings a lot of gravitas to have the Star Wars theme playing. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. Orchestra downstairs. Or, so if we can keep having that happen, I, I think it would really help our meetings move along. <laughs> just when you speak, you want to Yeah, right. <laughs> move along. I mean, I'm taking that as a hint. Right. <laughs> Mr. Helmet? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Two items. Uh, the first is I'd, l I'd like to congratulate uh, Greg Christiana on being elected town moderator and thank John Leone for his 15 years of uh, dedicated service to the town in that role. Secondly, um, I am wanted to promote the town's COVID booster clinic on, in Town Hall on Thursday, and I am myself scheduled to go get my extra booster shot Thursday morning. I believe there are still a few slots available, and you know I know we just had the health department in uh, to thank them, and this is just further proof that they just keep on going, and we appreciate that very much. You can uh, learn about that opportunity on the town website under the COVID information button. Thank you, Salman. Ms. Mahan? Um, three things, hopefully very briefly. One, I um, sort of already had a conversation about. I know the manager and town council, Attorney Heim, attended a meeting, um, WebEx, not Zoom, but like Zoom, um, with the MWRA with, as we spoke about before, Save the Our Life, Charles River Watershed and Mystic River Watershed. And um, they had discussion there. Um, I've asked town council to, it's my understanding that um, the MWRA and also possibly as of today the cities of Cambridge and Somerville um, have online um, their recommendations or, and or proposals and I, I've asked town council and the town manager to save us time and put that in an email with the links so that we can look that over and then the, the only thing that um, I took from the meeting which I was not at I got it second hand but I know the manager was um, in I believe Attorney Hine. Um, the big concern, one of the big concerns is that um, it appears from the modeling, which I'm going to forward uh, tomorrow, that in what MWR I said at the meeting are kind of not in concert with the, kind of con contradict themselves. Whereas, sort of the bone, one of the biggest bone of contention is that with moving forward on the our life and addressing CSOs and flooding that um, climate change be taken into consideration and not what um, has been discussed and is displayed in the modeling which is taking a 40-year average like 1949 to 1987 and including 1992. Um, I don't know if the manager maybe can speak to this briefly but my big concern is it's my understanding, I'll let the managers maybe say what MWRA said at the be meeting regarding climate change, but I think this board needs to and will endeavor to make sure, you know, what's said at a meeting is great, but what's the written word is in the agreement is the penultimate, is the ultimate what needs to be done. So if you can help me out, if it's okay to share. Sure. sure. So I think Mrs. Mahan said that very well, that there's a desire on the part of Save the AOF Brook to make sure that more recent rainfalls are more heavily weighted or prioritized in the analysis to account for the impacts of climate change on rainfall amounts. The MWRA said they are willing to shift towards uh, more of a recency bias, so to speak, in accounting for rainfall, but they don't, they're not yet proposing to go as far as, say, the AOF Brook folks have been asking for. So I think um, if I'm hearing you, you right, Mrs. Mahan, what you're asking myself and town council to do is ensure that not only does the MWRA in their drafts to the EPA do what they said they wanted to do, but perhaps continue to push them to do even better in accounting for forward-looking rainfall projections as opposed to just using historical data. Okay. Thank you. And then um, the last two, they're really quick. Um, and I'd also, besides the town manager, looked at the chair, Mr. Hurd. Um, I got something just as I was leaving, and I didn't really get to look into it about apparently another accident up at Wollaston and the communication to me was um, that no brakes both went through didn't indicate any serious injuries but the comment was you know we referred this to the select board and you referred it to a committee and what's going on 
Yeah. So um, if we could somehow just, you know, follow up on that. And then, and that's all I really know. And I literally was going out the door, so I didn't read everything word for word. So if I have anything, well, I saw a picture. So definitely was another accident there. And they were kind of like, hey, you know, whatever. And then lastly, um, if I could through you, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, sort of opera funding, but I had uh, spoken about this this morning. Um, I think we're close to the point in terms of essential pay for premium workers that everything's kind of been discussed and pretty much agreed upon. So um, if the manager could um, basically do the math and, and, and get back to the board um, where essential pay, I'm not talking about increasing it, just the $4 million statement. Um, and as the manager said previously, if there was a substantive amount there, um, there would be a future discussion on that. And then um, premium pay. I can't remember, so it doesn't matter. Go ahead. And thank you, Mr. Chair. You're welcome. You're welcome. So, so um, my, um, I have two comments. One is that I, mean, I, I am delighted to uh, have this role I mean, for, for a year. I mean, uh, um, I, um, I'm really getting out of this what I had um, hoped I would. I mean, and, and as I campaigned, I said, you know, I like learning things. I learned a lot. You know, I like working on hard problems. You got a lot of them. I mean, I like collaborating with people. And uh, you are a great group to collaborate on. And so I have to end with a haiku because it's my brand. You know, and so, so, so here we go. Nice thing it's just 17 syllables, you know. Select board meetings. Another year, let's all cheer. We love Arlington. Hi, <laughs> V. <laughs> no bad <laughs> rest. I knew the cheerleader would be like that. So, so, so on that, you know, I'll take a motion to adjourn. You're setting a high bar for yourself, Mr. Chair. Next year, Mr. Chair. Move to adjourn, Mr. Chair. Second. Move to adjourn. Second, and so, uh, Mr. Hyde? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Helmuth? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Namsville?